live from the 7 Newsplex first at 10. Police say a punishment goes way too far. A man now accused of putting a four-year-old girl into a coma by stuffing her under a waterbed mattress. Escape from Guantanamo Bay, caught on tape. Cubans trying to get out of there. Men posing as FBI agents bust into a home and tonight are still out there on the loose. A controversial call to 911. People claiming operators didn't do enough to save a teenage boy from being beaten to death. Nicole Brown Simpson's sister, Denise, softening her attack on O.J. Simpson. They say they offer a gem of a deal, but after an inside report reveals their plan, they're back on the attack. And 7 News is their main target. And a woman who has spent the past four weeks in a coma gives all of us a reason for Thanksgiving. I'm Kelly Mitchell. And I'm Rick Sanchez. And 7 News, first to 10, is coming up next. Live from South Florida's news station, WSBN 7. This is 7 News at 10 o'clock. A four-year-old fighting for every breath she takes. After police say this man took a punishment too far. They say he stuffed the girl under a waterbed mattress just to keep her quiet. Hello again, everybody. On this Thanksgiving, doctors are saying it's a matter of life or death. This all going down yesterday in Pompano Beach. Police say the man was looking after his girlfriend's daughter when his punishment went way too far. The night team's Craig Stevens live tonight at Broward General where this girl is being treated. Craig, is she doing okay tonight? Uh, Kelly, late word we have here at the Broward General Medical Center. This young girl is comatose. She remains in critical condition. Doctors and this little girl's mother are huddled inside maintaining a close watch. This as the woman's boyfriend stands accused tonight of aggravated child abuse. The voice from behind this closed door trembled as it spoke tonight. It belongs to the little girl's aunt, the one who called cops after she found her niece out cold, stuffed beneath a waterbed mattress. I don't know how she's doing. Her mother's with her at the hospital right now with her. She's been there with her. She's going to stay with her. That four-year-old girl, still unidentified, remains here at the Broward General Medical Center. This man, 24-year-old Carlos Schenk, is blamed with putting her there, charged with aggravated child abuse. Investigators say the girl's mother left the child with Schenk, her boyfriend, yesterday as she went to work. Schenk apparently had a tough time making the child behave, at one point claiming the little girl cursed at him. He first washed her mouth out with soap. When that uh, didn't have any effect, he... Uh, then poured Tabasco into her mouth. When that didn't manage to settle her down, Shank allegedly wrapped the girl in a comforter, stuffed her head first under a waterbed mattress, then left her. The girl's aunt, who says she'd just woken up from a nap in another room, found the girl that way several minutes later. She called the cops. Tonight, as a battery of doctors struggle to keep that little girl alive, her neighbors struggle to make some sense out of what happened. It's ridiculous. I mean, look at the past couple weeks, what's been going on with parents. There's no possible way you can get upset with a child. I don't care what she does. The guy's got to be a sicko. You know, I mean, especially a four-year-old girl. They said she was cussing, so he disciplined her. That's some pretty severe discipline. I think it's a wake-up call for all, for everyone. Everyone who sees this, they have to really wake up and be aware of what's going on. And that little girl, her aunt, her mother, we understand they had just moved here from Texas recently. Even so, neighbors they don't even know are pulling for them tonight, hoping this little girl is able to recover and recover soon. Meanwhile, Mr. Shank, we introduced you to him. He remains at the Broward County Jail tonight, held on $50,000 bond. We're live in Fort Lauderdale. I'm Craig Stevens with the night team. All right, thank you, Craig. Tonight, police are looking for four armed men who may be responsible for a number of home invasions in Miami Springs. Another one happening today. Police say the men got into the homes by posing as FBI agents. Once inside, the, one of them holds the victim's face down while the other ransacks the place looking for goods. No one was hurt in this incident today, but the robbers did get away with about $200. One was carrying what he believed to be a, a 38 revolver. Another one was carrying a, a 9 millimeter. One other one was carrying a 380, and uh, the fourth subject was carrying a large automatic, possibly a 45 automatic. 
Tonight, police are telling us the men are considered dangerous. They say you should ask for identification before opening your door to anyone, even if they identify themselves as police officers. But a home invasion attempt in New Hampshire is foiled with the help of a 14-year-old who has a lot to be thankful for tonight. Police say this man broke into the girl's home yesterday, tearing down her front door with a tire iron and taking her family's valuables, but she remained calm and collected, and she called 911. told her my name, and I told her that somebody was trying to break into my house. I was saying, hurry up. Um, I just want this, this person to get out of my house and just to leave me alone. When police did arrive on the scene, the suspect reportedly tried to run down an officer. Now, he fired several times to the car until the man gave up. The girl escaped unharmed, and police commended her for her bravery. Tonight, we're hearing for the first time the dramatic 911 calls made during a riot in a Philadelphia suburb that cost a teenager his life. Tonight, a lot of people are asking why it took police so long to respond to these 911 calls. About two weeks ago, two gangs of kids got into a fight at a McDonald's parking lot there. Police say a 16-year-old boy was beating another boy with a baseball bat. Tonight, officials in Philadelphia are asking big questions about this 911 system after hearing these tape recordings. Well, where was that, ma'am? Uh, uh, Ridgeway Street, 7900 Ridgeway Street. Okay. Uh, they got clubs out there. It's a gang place. And there's a kid hurt out there. All right. Did you get that? Yeah, a kid is hurt outside of the fight. Right? Was that it? No, that's it. Send the police car to come. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You asked me, and I'm asking you. What? I have the information. You can hang up now. We're in Fox Chase on Ridgeway Street. Beating the hell out of people with baseball bats up here. When are you going to send somebody? Who's got a bat, sir? <laughs> Who's got a bat? Some gorilla. What the hell do you mean? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't oh, yeah. talk to me like that. I asked you a question. I'm from... Who has the bat? There's a man who's got a bat. Is he black or white or his red? What's going on up here? Well, tonight, the Philadelphia Police Department is under investigation for taking so long to get to the scene of the fight, not to mention the 911 operators. Five boys have been charged with this teen's murder. The Cuba crisis pushing people to the edge in Guantanamo Bay. And tonight, an escape from that naval base, it is caught on tape. The night team's Belkis Deray at the World Satellite Center for us tonight putting together the pictures. Belkis? Kelly, they risked their lives to leave Cuba in the first place, but now hundreds of detainees at the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base say that they are growing tired of being there. They are housed at a camp called November where tensions run high and sometimes patience runs out. They're up against all odds, but some risk it anyway. I'll go catch you. The MPs take off after the escaped rafters, but it's too late. Two Cubans have taken the 30-foot plunge. Senor, come on. They're fighting the They're fighting the thing. Uh, let them swim. Once in the water, the Marines' orders are not to arrest them. Instead, they're to guide the Cubans the one mile to sovereign Cuba. Walk them on the cliff. You're going to drown, buddy. Where's he at? Where's the other one at? Hey! He's over there, I think. One Cuban decides the risk is too much and turns back. Hey, Marine State, if he comes up by himself, then you get him. 34 year old Mario Fermainan isn't giving up, though. He refuses the life jacket, but he does take the Marine's advice to walk on the cliffs whenever possible. Those left behind at Camp November cheer Mario on, saying this place forces many to take the risk. After three days here, I was going crazy. I didn't know what to do, throw rocks, escape, or stay. All of the rafters at Camp November say they've had it with the conditions at Guantanamo. They'd rather return to Cuba than live like this. We get about 25 names every two weeks of people that they're willing to take back. Uh, we've explained that entire process to the people in Camp November, and they're just totally unsatisfied with that. I mean, they're just unwilling to wait. Mario was unwilling to wait, and though he survived his escape at sea, he's not out of the woods yet. Now he has to make it through a Cuban minefield. Cuban frontier guards guide him through the dangerous journey, but feeling secure, he waves a thank you to the Marines who guided him and returns to his homeland, uncertain of what awaits him.
Now, more than 300 detainees have escaped from Guantanamo, two of which have drowned at sea, not to mention several others that have been injured while trying to get through those minefields. Live at the World Satellite Center, I'm Belkis Naray, 7 News 19. O.J. Simpson spending Thanksgiving behind bars, but he has received a slew of visitors, including his own attorney, Robert Shapiro. When Mr. Shapiro left the jail, he had this to say to reporters. My thought on uh, this Thanksgiving Day is that we should all be thankful for our system of justice. And I pray that everyone lets justice take its course in the proper form, and that is in the courtroom. Meantime, Nicole Brown's sister Denise is reissuing a statement she made about O.J. Simpson. Just yesterday, she called him a liar and she called him a murderer. Today, she is saying, and we're quoting here, I believe O.J. is entitled to a fair trial and that a jury should base its decision solely on the evidence in the case. Court action against O.J. Simpson on another legal front tonight. Ronald Goldman's mother, her name is Sharon Rufo, she's won a round in court. A judge is agreeing tonight that she does have the right to proceed in her wrongful death lawsuit against Simpson. And the alternate jury selection process breaks for the holiday. Right now, there are 32 people in the alternate jury pool. Judge Lance Ito, though, wants 46 prospects before the alternate jury is selected. And security does continue to tighten up around that 500-foot freighter sitting on a Fort Lauderdale beach that we've been showing you so much of. Earlier this week, police say somebody threatened to blow up the ship's anchor chain. Investigators later caught a guy who admitted the threat was nothing more than a hoax. Well, tonight, police say they are patrolling the boat around the clock. It washed ashore, as you might recall, last week during Tropical Storm Gordon. Officials say they hope to have it off the beach by the end of this week. And we may soon find out if the waters of Biscayne Bay are fit for the public. Last week's storm apparently left some of the area polluted with bacteria. HRS has banned swimming and fishing in some parts of the bay, but we are hearing a technician will soon check to see if there's any improvement. It is a miracle Thanksgiving for one South Florida family tonight. See, last month, a pregnant Michelle Poland fell into a coma and nearly died. Amazing things happened while she was in that coma. She gave birth and then had a miracle recovery. And this Thanksgiving Day, she went home for the very first time. The night team's Juan Fernandez with this story. Uh, thanks for my baby. Thanks for me. Thanks for everything. She's a firefighter and a paramedic. And 24-year-old Michelle Poland has lots to be thankful for today, a day family and friends thought she'd never see. We didn't think she'd come home this early. The doctor said no, it wouldn't happen. He said maybe Christmas. It was September 25th. A massive blood clot in her brain sent Michelle into a life-threatening 13-day coma. At the time, she was pregnant, and that made matters worse. But doctors were able to save the baby and Michelle. I had such a hard time, and I had such difficulties and complications that it's a miracle that he actually lived through. She gets some physical therapy and occupational therapy during the day, and they work on her uh, walking and uh, ADLs, which is activities of daily living. For Poland's family, today is like a dream come true. You see, just three weeks ago, she couldn't eat or walk without assistance. Tonight, she'll join the rest of the family at a huge Thanksgiving dinner. They're going to be fun, spending time with my family, to see my house again, get to see my dog. <laughs> There's a lot of tears shed, um, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of explaining to do to the little kids that didn't understand. It's amazing that she comes this far. We can't ask for any more. It's one of the best Thanksgivings we'll ever have. In Sunrise, Juan Fernandez, 7 News 19. Now, we do want to tell you that uh, Michelle is back in the hospital tonight. We're told that she's going to remain there for an undetermined amount of time until doctors say they feel that she is strong enough to finally go home for good and take care of the rest of her family. We wish her well. Kelly? And back here in South Florida, the Thanksgiving holiday would not be complete without what? A parade. Hundreds lining the streets in North Miami today for the annual Winter National Parade. Spectators looked on as several Dade County school bands marched to the beats of their own drums. Now, of course, they had floats, they had some fire trucks, fireworks, and even Miss North Miami turning out for the event. 
And the Miami Rescue Mission held a block party for the homeless downtown today. Hundreds of people turned out to celebrate the holiday and enjoy just a real nice Thanksgiving meal. And how could we forget some of the more famous Thanksgiving parades across our nation? The granddaddy of them all held in New York City this morning. The 68th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade rolled its way down Broadway today. Tens of thousands turned out to see the enormous flows, the even bigger balloons, and the bands in this extravagant holiday tradition. And in Philadelphia, people also lined the streets for that city's annual parade. This celebration highlighted by floats like that one there, costumes and marching bands from dozens of area schools. More of the same in the city of Detroit. Parade goers in the Motor City drummed in Thanksgiving with, you guessed it, more floats, more marching bands, and more balloons. Other stories that we are going to bring you tonight from the newsplex on this Thanksgiving night. The Joe Robbie family is apparently back in the spotlight, Kelly. Tonight, one family member is behind bars accused of assaulting a police officer. An update on an elderly woman almost buried alive. So is it really a gem of a deal? The stone sellers are back, but so is the Seven's Inside Report. And start them up. Rolling Stones getting ready to play South Florida. The camera's fired up for the practice of Joe Robbie. We will take you there. You are watching 7 News at 10 with Rick Sanchez, Kelly Mitchell, Roland Stedham Weather, and Jay Heiler Sports. 7 News brought to you in part by Rooms to Go. You'll find bigger selection, lower prices, faster delivery, and by your South Florida Mazda dealer. Here's another somewhat sad story on this Thanksgiving. The son of former Miami Dolphins owner Joe Robbie is back behind bars. Michael Robbie, accused of assaulting a police officer in Palm Beach County. The night team's Belkis Nare monitoring this one. She's at the news desk. Belki? Rick, there is trouble for the son of the late Joe Robbie, Mike Robbie, spending his Thanksgiving in a Palm Beach County jail. Robbie, shown here being arraigned this morning, was picked up by Boca Raton police for allegedly jumping in and out of traffic. Police say he had to be physically escorted from the street. One officer suffered a broken leg trying to catch up with him. Go ahead. He lunged his body at me, and uh, we got tangled up. And in an attempt to get him onto the ground, um, we kind of all fell down together. 46-year-old Robbie has a history of minor drug arrests in Dade County, dating as far back as 1980. Boca Raton police charge him with battery on a police officer, resisting an officer with violence and disorderly conduct. His bond was set for $1,000, but so far, no one's bailed him out. Live at the news desk, I'm Belkis Nare, 7 News Night. <laughs> 7 News Around the Nation tonight begins in Washington, where police are tightening security at D.C. police headquarters tonight. They have installed metal detectors in hopes of preventing a repeat of a deadly shooting spree that left three dead, make that four dead, on Tuesday. Meantime, investigators continue to analyze evidence found in the home of this alleged gunman. They say the evidence suggests that Bernie Lee Lawson, who also died in that attack, was obsessed with revenge against police. Baltimore, another alleged case of mother turning killer. Police officers say a woman deliberately set fire to her own house killing her two daughters inside. Police say Renee Alton confessed to this crime, telling police officers that she did it because her boyfriend didn't like one of her daughters. He, of course, denies that. She is charged with murder and with arson. New York, reports of her death had been greatly exaggerated, unfortunately, until now. 86-year-old Mildred Clark died in an Albany hospital yesterday. You may remember this name. This is the same woman who had been mistakenly pronounced dead a week ago. Now, a morgue supervisor heard her breathing after he pulled her out of the refrigerator. She'd been inside for 90 minutes, but this time, several doctors did confirm that she had no vital signs. Staying in New York, police put their foot down and catch an alleged shoe thief. Police officers have charged 32-year-old with stealing the shoes right off the feet of two women as they were walking down the street. The female officer posed as a decoy to catch this guy. They say he apparently has some kind of foot fetish. Coming up next, we go back to our top story tonight. That is an update on a little four-year-old girl who police say was almost suffocated to death after being stuck underneath a waterbed mattress. A company targeted by 7 News strikes back, and so is Carmel Caffaro in our Inside Report, a gem of a deal. And a lot of people did see the movie Free Willy, but now we have it in real life, and we'll take you to Australia for this one.
And then later on, 7-Eleven, we go to the Plymouth Rock, where not everyone is celebrating this Thanksgiving. We will explain. We're back in two. Seven News closed captioning for the hearing impaired is brought to you in part by Waterbed City and City Furniture, the ultimate furniture store. Tonight, we have an update on a Seven News investigation of a local auction company. In September, we told you about their claims of a gem of a deal, but experts that we spoke to said they may have misled customers about the value of gemstones sold. Now, investigative reporter Carmel Caffaro says they're back, so she's back as well with this inside report. Maybe you saw the newspaper advertisements for Gems International. They looked like a news article complete with a byline. And they blamed a TV news story for financial problems that forced a big auction of gems. A rather forlorn-looking fellow is pictured surrounded by gemstones. Gee, he sure looks a lot like this man who refused to identify himself when I showed up at an auction back in September, an auction where I was ordered out. I, wrote, I don't give you permission to be in here, so I'd like you to leave. If you want, I can call the cops. But let me back up here and explain why I went to that auction in the first place. Shirley and Henry Pommier of Coral Gables believe they were misled in the purchase of tens of thousands of dollars worth of gemstones at earlier auctions run by Agra Art and Antiques. The stones came with certificates of appraisal from Gems International indicating approximate insurance replacement values much higher than what they paid. But experts later told them the gems were worth far less than the certificates indicate and less than they paid. In my opinion, as a lay person, to me, it smacks of fraud. So Seven News went in undercover to an Agra auction. A Seven News producer posed as a customer, and master gemologist Joe Tenhagen pretended to be her father. They bought three stones. Just as we had seen with the Pommiers, Agra sold the stones with certificates of appraisal from Gems International. Tenhagen says both description and value are inaccurate for all three stones. An example? Agra sold this stone as an aquamarine barrel lemon. It is not aquamarine at all. It is a very pale yellowish barrel. The insurance appraisal Agra supplied is $2,400. Ken Hagen says the retail value is more like $25 to $30 if you could sell it. And I'd like some explanation for that. I don't, I don't want to be on TV. Julian Turobiner, the owner of Agra, was not pleased. He eventually explained Jim's International supplied the appraisals. And an who is Jim's International? It's a, a corporation, Florida corporation. He did not offer the fact it operates from the same Boca office as Agra and is also run by a Turo Biner, Stephen Turo Biner, the same man quoted in the recent news style advertisements. Anyone with a lot of customers that buy from us and we've never had complaints like this. And who are you? The first person. And who are you? I don't have to discuss my name with you. you oh, you don't? Why not? Are you afraid of identifying no, I'm, yourself? Can I ask you Absolutely. To leave? I don't. I don't think that you. He's can talking to me. I'm asking you to leave. <laughs> I was uh, pretty concerned. Art Trollinger was chairman of the auctioneer licensing board at the time our reports aired. He was so concerned he videotaped them. And I think it was the next day I federal expressed it to investigations in Tallahassee. That was in September. Despite that, in a written complaint from the Pommiers, they say the state hasn't even contacted them to investigate their charges. Meanwhile, the Turobiners continue to stage auctions. The latest, last week in Coral Gables, is the one reportedly forced by bad publicity. A peek is about all I got. It was quite clear we were not welcome. Not too many people have shown up for the preview. But I have learned this auction ran into trouble well before it started. The International Society of Appraisers challenged the accuracy of advertisements for this auction. They read a member of the International Society of Appraisers would be at the auction to verify lots. But that claim was dropped in later ads. 
Arlene Swartz, the Miami ISA president, says in fact no member of her organization was involved in the auction. As for the function of verifying the lots... Uh, verifying lots? I've never heard of an appraiser verifying lots. In fact, I'm not sure what the phrase means. Um, in my opinion, it's meaningless. Only about a dozen people showed up for the gem auction, and I have had no response to my request for an interview. Shirley Pommier, meanwhile, is bitterly disappointed with the state of Florida. She says the Turo Biners continue to hold auctions while, quote, she is stuck with two boxes of junk. With this Inside Report, I'm Carmel Cafaro, 7 News. I'm Belky Nere at the 7 News Update Desk, and tonight's top stories at 10.30 begin in Pompano Beach. That's where a four-year-old girl is fighting for her life after an alleged case of child abuse. Cops say a man was babysitting his girlfriend's daughter when he claims a little girl swore at him. That's when police say the man washed the girl's mouth out with soap and Tabasco sauce, then wrapped her in a blanket and shoved her under a waterbed mattress. Tonight, she's in a coma in critical condition at Broward General. The man is charged with aggravated child abuse. Cuba, dramatic video of refugees trying to escape Guantanamo Bay Naval Base. About 600 Cubans housed in a refugee camp called November say the conditions there are so bad they'd rather go back to Cuba than stay another day. Cuban authorities only take about 50 refugees back per month, and for some, that's just too long to wait. Several refugees have already escaped, risking the dangerous trip back to their homeland. More than 20,000 Cubans are being housed at the naval base. And finally, after 30 years, a remnant of the Cold War may soon be gone from Cuba. MCI and AT&T say tomorrow begins direct long-distance service to the island. MCI plans to access the country via satellite, while AT&T will use an undersea cable. The cost is $1.49 per minute and should be available by 5 p.m. tomorrow night. And those are our 1030 top stories. At the Update Desk, I'm Belkis Nure. Thank you, Belkis. In just a few minutes, we will take you to Joe Robbie Stadium. You want some satisfaction? Well, you're going to get it because the Stones are warming up tonight for tomorrow's really big show. The camera's rolling at the practice, and we'll show you more. Plus, as always, a couple of little surprises coming up. I'm Roland Stedham, live in the Weather Center. Well, the cool air is here right on time, but how long will it last? We'll have the details coming up next. Seven News brought to you in part by your South Florida Lexus dealers and by AT&T. We'll always be there with new ways to help. Long after you've gone to bed tonight, Seven News will still be here working on stories for tomorrow's edition of Today in Florida. So wake up with the number one news in the morning, Today in Florida, starting at 6. Channel 7 weather brought to you in part by your South Florida Ford dealers. <laughs> Time for 7 Weather with Roland Stedham. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I think it was only fitting that we had some nice, cool temperatures today around the Sunshine State. Plenty of sunshine. And look at this, Tallahassee, a little frost on the pumpkin this morning, 37 degrees, 57 for a high today. Pensacola with a high of 61, Jacksonville, 62 degrees. At Fort Lauderdale, 64 this morning and 77 degrees this afternoon. Miami, almost the same temperature. And Key West, 70 for a low with a high today of 78 degrees. But because of the breeze, it actually felt a little bit cooler than that. 71 degrees right now, humidity is 61%, and wind is out of the northeast at 12 miles per hour. That northeasterly wind is going to continue once again tomorrow. So for the boaters, small craft advisory remains in effect once again tomorrow. High pressure dominating much of the country. And now we're watching this. Another major winter-like storm is blasting into the Pacific Northwest. This one will bring additional heavy snow to the Cascades of Oregon and Washington, across the Shasta Mountains of Northern California, and also the Sierra Nevada. It will continue to push right on across the country. And there's a possibility that we could see some colder temperatures coming in sometime later on next week, but it's a wait-and-see situation as far as that is concerned. We'll continue to watch it. Just some high, thin clouds drifting over the state today. We had plenty of sunshine. It doesn't get much better than this. And it looks like this pattern is going to hang in there once again tomorrow with a gradual warming trend expected this weekend. 
All right, for the boaters tomorrow, the small craft advisory, winds will be out of the east at 15 to 20 knots, seas running 4 to 6 feet, temperature in the surf has finally cooled down to 79 degrees. Tonight, nice and cool, a low of 63, almost a repeat performance of last night, and tomorrow, sunny and breezy, windy along the beaches. We could see with this easterly flow a couple of morning showers along the coastal areas, but it'll dissipate. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Highs nudging up to about 78 degrees. Still going to feel like a nice, cool day. And the extended forecast on Saturday and Sunday and Monday, no major changes. But we will notice a very gradual warming trend in the temperatures. But it should be on the dry side as far as the humidity is concerned. And once again, no rain in the forecast for the next few days. We'll continue to watch that, that major winter storm that's moving into the Pacific Northwest over the next few days. But that is about it. I'm wearing the Expando suit tonight. Had a little too much turkey. And that's the way things are shaping up. Uh, my time is up. I thank you for yours. Here's Rick and Kelly. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, we did notice that, Roland. <laughs> it really was nice out today, though. A lot of people getting out, enjoying today's chilly winds, dozens of them cooling off on Red Hot South Beach, a place you wouldn't expect to see a lot of folks all along the trendy strip. People were wearing long sleeve shirts, even jackets this Thanksgiving. Most of the people we spoke with said they welcome the cool air. Gives them a chance to wear some of the clothes that uh, usually collects mothballs in the closets. Absolutely. Coming up next, we present the Stones, the Rolling Stones. That's right. They're at the Joe. In fact, this is pictures of them at the Joe, including the famous one there on the left. The night before the Voodoo Lounge Tour is going to take South Florida by storm. I noticed she didn't say his name. Michael Jackson <laughs> is plenty thankful tonight because it looks like all his problems are finally behind him. Who is that guy? <laughs> and get ready to go to the moon. The honeymoon, the honeymooners, I should say, in black and white. Not TV, the book. Jagger. Yeah, okay. And later in sports, UN's Warren Sapp is everybody's All-American. And Thurman Thomas can't believe he ate the whole thing. The Bills poisoned on Thanksgiving Day, later in sports. Their music has spanned the generations, and tonight the Rolling Stones are warming up for another big South Florida show. The Voodoo Lounge Tour tops tonight's People News. That's right, we're under 24 hours away from the first South Florida Stone show in five years. Today, the band did a dry run at Joe Robbie Stadium. Now, the real deal actually kicks off tomorrow night. 7 o'clock is the time. They also have Cheryl Crow and the Spin Doctors, and JRS is the place. No, I, think it, I think doing stuff like pay-per-view is good because it, it just comes at a point in the tour where you're starting to get a bit comfortable. You know, where everyone knows their job, everyone knows the songs, and yes, we change the songs on them, but it's not really a huge jolt. And that, that's the famous one, Rick. Thank if you. you don't have a ticket for the sold-out shindig, don't fret, because you can see it on pay-per-view if you want to spend the bucks. As a bonus, Whoopi Goldberg is going to host the show. And again, we have special appearances not only by the Stones, but Cheryl Crow, Bo Diddley, Robert Cray, and those spin doctors. I know one of them. Blood test confirming the king of pop is not a father. That's right, a California judge is throwing out a paternity suit filed against Michael Jackson. A woman filed a suit claiming that Jackson was the father of her 10-year-old son. Well, DNA tests proved that Jackson's innocence and indicated the woman's ex-husband is probably the father. Oh, you know she sings like butter. But does she do it in the shower? Sing? Well, you can find out because Barbara Streisand's ex-husband, actor Elliot Gould, has written a book about their marriage. We are hearing that this tell-all book really does tell all, if you can believe what Gould says, but we doubt that Barbara will find this a book full of misty, water-colored memories. The TV wife of Jackie Gleason coming out with a new book about the 1950s hit show, The Honeymooners. Audrey Meadows played the role of Alice Cramden on this show. Her book is called Love Alice, My Life as a Honeymooner. Reminisces about the life and the times behind the scenes of the Honeymooners. Some 40 years after the Honeymooners, the series is still going strong in syndication all over the world. Thanksgiving Day was a near disaster for one New York City marching band. After being canceled at the last minute from an appearance on NBC's Tonight Show, well, the star of that show saved the day. I feel terrible because I... I don't know where those kids are, and, and you know, I feel bad. Don't you wish you could have 
wish you could get him here. <laughs> The All City High School Band made its appearance on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. The band had changed its Thanksgiving Day plans to be on The Tonight Show program and then learned it had been cut right there on the editing room floor. But Leno learned about their story from a newspaper and asked them to come back on the show. In the Thanksgiving spirit. Up next, some good Thanksgiving news for our troops in Haiti. They could be coming home for the holidays. Not this one, but the next. It's Free Willy in Australia, only this scene is for real. We watch rescue workers free this whale next. Then on 7 at 11, we go back to the beginning, the birth of freedom, Plymouth Rock. Southern News, brought to you in part by your South Florida Mazda dealer. World news tonight, starting off in India. A stampede in the city of Nagpur yesterday, reportedly killing more than 100 protesters and leaving up to 500 others injured. Sources say they were demonstrating in the city when the police came after them with bamboo canes. That is when the people stampeded, trampling dozens while trying to escape. Estonia, a hijack attempt ends in that country's capital city. Sources say the kidnapper had some type of flammable liquid on board the plane, saying he would blow it up if his demands weren't met. That man surrendered to authorities after a standoff in the end. All 70 people on board were released without injury. In Bosnia, the grainy picture at the corner of your screen is NATO's response to Bosnian Serbs. NATO attacking Serbs for the reported assaults on the UN safe haven at Bihak. Tonight, sources say that Serbs have retaliated by retaining, or pardon me, detaining more than 200 UN peacekeeping forces. Things apparently escalating. Word is now the Serbs have rejected a ceasefire proposal. Haiti, thousands of American troops there are scheduled to come home for the holidays, and that's according to Defense Secretary William Perry. He visited Haiti today. About 3,500 soldiers will leave the Caribbean nation by mid-December. Sources say United Nations force will replace those leaving sometime next year. Forces have been there ever since Haiti's military government gave up power in October. Finally, Australia. Rescue workers in New South Wales freed Willie. Willie the whale had been trapped by a sandbar for more than three months. Workers tried in the past but couldn't hoax this creature across the sandbar. This time, around wildlife teams, where uh, a team of wildlife teams were able to guide the animal back out to sea with a special harness they made for him. And there he goes. Later on 7 and 11, we go to the rock. By going to the Plymouth Rock, where it all began. Only there, some aren't celebrating this year. That will be our 11 o'clock headline. And first in sports, can the Cowboys pull out a victory with their third string quarterback? Well, just ask Mr. Smith. And Rodriguez, Video Sports, next. 7 News closed captioning for the hearing impaired is brought to you in part by aluminum roll-up shades and shutters. Channel 7 Sports brought to you in part by your South Florida Ford dealers. Time for 7 Video Sports with Ken Rodriguez. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Right now, the Dolphins have only the Jets to worry about after the Bills dropped another game off the pace with a Turkey Day loss at Detroit. Lions fans were feeling pretty blue today, but that's, that's good for them. Second play of the game, a flea flicker. Back to Dave Craig, and Craig sends it back to Herman Moore. 51-yard scoring play, 7-0, 351 yards passing for Craig. Lions would score a couple more times before the end of the half. Craig, 28 yards to Aubrey Matthews, one of three touchdown passes for Craig on the day. Marv Levy doesn't like it, 21 to 7 at the half. Then Kelly and company went to work, sure-handed Pete Metzelars with a touchdown catch. Kelly must have gotten a hold of some bad turkey because he loses his mind, takes off, and scores from 15 yards out, and they close the door with a couple of fourth-quarter interceptions by Willie Clay. This one returned for a touchdown. Lions win 35-21. They improve to 6-6. Six and six. Thurman Thomas sick to his stomach but not from Thanksgiving Day Turkey. Right now, you know, we're a frustrated football team and we can't worry about, we can't worry about what the Dolphins or the Jets or anybody else do. We know uh, in order for us to make the playoffs, we probably have to go 10 and six, and which is win the rest of our ball games. Can't win championships when you do things like that. And uh, I don't know, right now it's, it's, it's tough to me even uh, think about what's going on this, this one. It hurt bad, especially the way it ended. 
Nothing to be thankful about having Troy Aikman and Rodney Pete on the sidelines for the Cowboys. That meant third string Princeton man Jason Garrett got the call on his first drive. He was intercepting. Looked like a miserable day for the Cowboys, but second quarter, Green Bay's Brett Favre finds Sterling Sharper's second touchdown of the half. Third quarter with the Packers leading 17-13. Sharp again, 30 yards for the score. Four touchdown passes to Sharp today, but the Ivy Leaguer put his smarts to work. Garrett, 45 yards to Alvin Harper to close the gap. 24-20, too many big play people on the Dallas roster. Garrett finds Michael Irvin this time. Dallas wins it. They own the league's best record at 10-2, and, and yes, the NFL rocks on Fox. Baylor Bears spend a little too much time eating turkey today. It cost them a trip to the Cotton Bowl. Texas quarterback James Brown threw for a school record five touchdown passes, including two to Eric Jackson as the Longhorns used all kinds of big plays to embarrass Baylor. 63-35 to at 7-4, Texas poised for its first postseason game in four years, possibly the Alamo Bowl. Ooh, Texas Tech appears headed to the Cotton Bowl instead of Baylor. Syracuse at West Virginia. Well, maybe Don Nealon's mom was watching this one. Jimmy Gray, Jimmy Gary, that is, 30 yards down to the Syracuse 25-yard line. That set up the only touchdown of the first half. Then Chad Johnson goes up top to Rashawn Banterpool for another big gainy. <laughs> Gainer, lowly West Virginia leads number 23 Syracuse 13 nothing in the fourth quarter. Too much turkey for me, too. The football writers have come out with their All-American team. Here you have some of the notables. Penn State's Kerry Collins, Kajana Carter head the list, along with Rashan Salam and Florida's Jack Jackson. Auburn's Frank Sanders, BC's Pete Mitchell, Seminole lineman Clay Shiver, and Zach Weigert round out the offensive team on defense. No doubt about the leader of that group, UM's Warren Sapp, who's also a finalist for a gazillion other awards this year. Other defensive standouts include Florida State's Derek Alexander and Ted Bruschi of Arizona. There's FSU linebacker Derek Brooks, joined by Nebraska's Ed Stewart and DB's Chris Hudson and Chris Schelling of Auburn. Only three years ago, there were only, well, two NHL hockey teams, none in the state of Florida. Now we have as many as three, possibly. New Jersey Devils owner John McMullen told the New York Post that he may move his team to Orlando, citing bad attendance. Only one NBA game. The rest of the league had the day off. The rest of, you know, when you're seven foot tall, you're easy to find. Not so easy for Rick Smith. 28 points, game high for him today. Mark Jackson, two Reggie Miller, throws one up. See where it lands there. Pacers win the battle of division leaders. 123, 96 the final over the Warriors. Finally, some Thanksgiving Day wishes from your Miami Heat team. Uh, I want to wish everybody a safe and prosperous um, Thanksgiving. And uh, may God be with you all and eat, eat a lot of food and a lot of turkey. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm going to eat. <laughs> A happy Thanksgiving, South Florida. Um, you know, we're definitely thankful um, for a lot of things. Uh, you know, we just want to wish every every one of you a happy Thanksgiving. Well, my Thanksgiving wish, that everybody lived to be uh, 100, me 100 minus a day, so I never know such beautiful people in South Florida have passed away. John's running for office these days. That'll do for Sports at 10. Let's send it back to Rick. Enjoyed playing football with you this morning, Mr. Rodriguez. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> That's sore, huh? Well, hopefully next week, Channel 10 won't be too scared to show up. That is 7 News, first to 10. 7-11 begins right now. Next, on 7 at 11, a little girl in a coma after police say a boyfriend of the mother takes discipline much too far. They risk their lives for a chance to live in the U.S. Now, dozens of Cuban refugees take another risk to go back home. A South Florida family celebrating a miracle homecoming they thought would never happen. Team Simpson is saying they're praying for justice as OJ spends Thanksgiving behind bars. And the holiday was anything but peaceful at the place where Thanksgiving originated. 7 at 11, just two away. Live from South Florida's news station, WSVN 7. This is 7 at 11.